guys, it's me Roja and today's video is on reaction mechanism. So today let's talk about reaction mechanism and let's talk about this reaction here between hydrobromic acid and oxygen forming water vapor and bromine gas. If you look at the reaction, I think you can see there's five reactant molecules on the left. That's quite a few. And it's really not likely that all those reaction molecules are going to collide successfully all at once with the right, remember, energy, orientation, geometry, and so on. It's really impossible. Also notice that there's plenty of bonds to break up and lots of bonds to form. It really doesn't make sense that all this will happen all at once. So after some investigation, it turns out that this reaction happens in steps. Let's see what the first step looks like. Well, the hydrobromic acid re reacts with oxygen to make this hydrogen, oxygen, and bromine compound, we'll call it Huber. It's not a reactant or a product of the overall reaction. It's something that we call a reaction intermediate and exists just during the reaction. Let's see what happens in the second step. Another hydrobromic acid reacts with that intermediate Huber we had before, making two of these new, looks like also reaction intermediates, we'll call them Hober another hydrogen, oxygen, and bromine compound. Again, short-lived and only lasting during the reaction. In the third step, two more hydrobromic acid molecules will react with those two hobers that we had as products of the second reaction, produce two water molecules and two bromine gas molecules. This looks like pretty good, except if you notice, it's really two of these last reactions, isn't it? It's kind of worth thinking about. It looks like a lot more, this looks a lot closer to the truth that there would be two of this last final reaction happening in parallel. Just think about it. Each one of those Hobers has got to react with a hydrobromic acid to, to make one water molecule and one bromine gas molecule. Although in books you'll see the twos in front of every one of these species in the reaction, to interpret it correctly, you'll really just think about having those square brackets there. You'll understand it much more deeply. So off of our aside, let's get back to our reaction. We'll take those square brackets away and put the twos back. I'll put the star there so you can remember what that really means is two of that whole reaction. If you add them all up and take away the guys that are intermediates, we'll remove the Hubers and the Hobers, which get produced and used up. You can see that this whole set of reactions adds up to our overall reaction. That is in fact good. Notice that some of the steps are slow and fast, and the first one happened to be slow as it happens. So notice that since step two and three have to wait for the first step in our reaction, that's the slow one, then that the whole reaction can't really go any faster than that slowest step, in our case, step number one. What does that really mean? Well, let's have a look at our reaction. There's the hydrobromine and the oxygen, they'll collide together, making our friend Huber. That's a slow reaction, remember. Huber is then going to go and get collided with, with a, another hydrobromic acid molecule. That's a fast reaction now. And these, uh, this collision will yield the Hober and another one going in the other direction. That first Hober gets hit by another hydrobromine gas or hydrobromine acid molecule to produce the bromine and the water molecule. Same thing happens to the bottom a uh, Hober, it gets struck by another hydrobromic acid in a fast reaction, giving you the water and the bromine gas again. Here's a little bit more realistic view of our reaction. Look, see the Huber in between the first and second reaction, and these two Hobers in between the second and the two third reactions? They're intermediates, and they just exist during the overall reaction, not before or after, just between the steps. Look here, you can see them again. There's the Huber being produced and then used up. And later here we have these Hobers being produced and then used up. That's the idea of a reaction intermediate illustrated here two different ways. So remember that this slowest step sets the rate of the overall reaction. Hmm. Let's just look then and see if we can figure out which reactions will be fast and which ones will be slow. Let's start with a fast reaction. Here's one that comes to mind. This is the silver ion and the chloride ion making a precipitate of silver chloride. It's a really fast reaction. Why should that be? Well, there's only two particles and one step will do. Also, these particles are well mixed in solution. There's no chemical bonds to break. 
And think about this, there's no electron repulsions to overcome. In fact, these oppositely charged particles attract each other. Also, it's a simple product, and geometry really not important. There is no special orientation needed. That reaction goes really fast. Here's a slow one, at least in terms of mechanism anyway. This is the combustion of propane. Do you remember propane? It looks like propane, but it's got this double bonded between the second and the third carbons. Let's write it as a chemical formula. Here we have propane, oxygen, and carbon dioxide and water. Let's balance the reaction. It's not really slow to watch, but we say the mechanism is slow. Let's see why. Well, for the first reason, there's many particles. 11 of them need to collide. That will never happen. There's also many bonds to break and form all at once. There's mutual electron cloud repulsions to overcome. Geometry really matters with these large complicated molecules. And clearly a multi-step reaction process or a mechanism is needed. That reaction mechanism is going to be slow. So anyway, there's a brief overview of the idea of mechanism and a couple examples of both fast and slow mechanisms. Have a look at the next videos in the playlist for more on the topic and stay tuned for our next lesson in Chemistry 12, lesson number 5, Enthalpy Diagrams. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.